ladies welcome back to my channel my name is Kaka Amano and I'm an etiquette and lifestyle educator today we're going to be talking about something that is not so talked about stationery because of the times that we live in we find that less and less people have recourse to the use of stationery which is a very sad thing because every proper lady and gentleman once in a while is required to write a letter or at least a thank you note in this video i'm going to be showing you using what i have as always the components of a proper stationary wardrobe what is stationary stationary is a very broad word it encompasses all writing materials but in this video, when I refer to stationery, I am referring to proper, elegant stationery that is becoming of a lady or a gentleman. But because I'm talking to you ladies, I'm going to be focused on you because there's a slight difference between stationery for men and stationery for women. Just a very slight difference. So we're going to jump right into it without further ado. In this video, I'm going to try to keep it beginner friendly for people who are trying to start building their own stationary wardrobe. When we hear stationary wardrobe, what exactly does that mean? A stationary wardrobe is just like every other type of wardrobe. It is made up of all the different materials you need to enable you create a very elegant, very beautiful written correspondence. You might think, when exactly am I going to have to write a letter or write something to someone? I mean, I could just text them, right? But proper etiquette actually calls for the use of handwritten letters and handwritten notes on very, very specific occasions. For instance, when you receive a gift from someone, maybe it was your wedding or your birthday and someone sends you a gift, it is best to write them a handwritten thank you note just to express your gratitude. There is something about handwritten letters and notes that is just much more personal than typewritten ones. If you don't believe me, think about all the times that people have ever written you letters or notes, even from your younger days, like written birthday cards or signed birthday cards that you received from your family or friends. You tend to cherish those more than, I don't know, the ones that people just buy from the store and just send to you. Don't you think so? I think so. <laughs> I think so. I think it's something that we cherish. I personally like to collect all the handwritten notes or letters that I've ever received or handwritten cards. I just stack them up somewhere and sometimes when I'm feeling down, I just go through them. It makes me feel better about myself. It makes me feel like there are people who actually really do care about me. And that's a nice feeling to have, don't you agree? So yeah. Other instances where it's proper to write a handwritten note could be when you have been invited by someone to, I don't know, dine in their house or stay over as a house guest. You don't just send them a text or an email to say, oh, thank you, I had a lovely time spending time with you. No, <laughs> that, is, that, is, uh, that is very juvenile. You write them, you write them a letter or a note, depending on how, um, you know how profound your experience was be generous by the way with your writing thank them show gratitude show appreciation for the care and the hospitality that you received and all these are poured out better in writing in your handwriting okay there are several other instances like when you have to write a condolence letter or when you have to send someone a gift it is also better to send someone a gift with a very tiny handwritten you know piece enclosed in it there are just a thousand other reasons why you should write people more often so if you've never been one to write people it's kind of fun and you should consider doing so because people really do appreciate it. I can tell you for a fact, all the people that I've ever written to during the course of our relationship have really shown so much appreciation for it that it makes me want to write people more. So enough of trying to convince you to write more handwritten correspondence. I am going to go ahead and break down the different things that make up a stationary wardrobe. Let's start with the paper. 
This right here is my stationary paper. This is where I store them. This is the case that it came in. As you can see, it says right here, American stationery. I don't know if you can see, right there. This is a company I believe that specializes in personalized stationery. Personalized stationery are basically stationery that are customized to your person, which is why we talk about stationary wardrobe to begin with, because just like every other type of wardrobe, like your clothing, it is tailored to suit your specific needs, your style, and you know, your body shape and things like, of course your paper is not tailored to suit your body shape, but it generally reflects your style. Let's go ahead and look into it. I'm going to begin by telling you that there are different sizes and types of paper. So when you're picking your personalized stationery, it's best to have in mind what exactly are you going to be writing more often? Who exactly are you going to be writing more often to? Are you going to be writing more thank you notes? Are you going to be writing more long letters? Are you going to be exchanging you know, information with people or using it more when you're sending gifts to people? You know, These are the things you consider. What exactly do you plan to use your stationery for? that would influence the type of papers that you decide to get. Personally, I just went with three different types, but you can go with as many as five different types of um, paper. I'm going to mention a few of the paper types and their uses, then show you and tell you more about the ones that I have right here, okay? First off, there are letter sheets. Letter sheets are the most versatile type of papers that you can have in your stationary wardrobe. They are usually used to write like longer letters and correspondences and they typically have either your monogram in the top center or your full name written in the top center. The next are monarch sheets. These are more formal than the letter sheets. They are more executive and used for either business correspondence or social correspondence, but it is typically more formal than the letter sheets. Then there are the folded cards or folded notes or fold over cards or fold over notes, whichever you choose to call them. These are the most commonly used um, because they are smaller and used to write things like quick thank you notes. Just like the name suggests, it typically folds over. Then there are informals. Informals are anything but informal. They are only used by women and it is a very formal type of paper with their names engraved on it, which they use to issue invitations to people and things like that. We also have correspondence cards and correspondence sheets. Correspondence sheets are typically bigger than correspondence cards. While correspondence cards are used for very brief and informal correspondence, correspondence sheets are used for slightly longer correspondence. I know, a lot of correspondence, but yeah, that's the way it is. Finally, we have calling cards. Calling cards are typically really small. They have your name and contact details written on them. They're slightly different from business cards because, you know, business cards have more details of your business written on them. Calling cards are more personal and they just have the simplest information about you and your details on them, okay? So now I'm just going to show you what I have and tell you how they are used. Before I go ahead and begin my show and tell, I wanted to mention a few things about your paper choices. When you're choosing the type of paper to build your stationary wardrobe with, you have to keep in mind a few things. First off, the paper weight. Even though the different types of stationary paper should come in different weights, you can choose a particular weight and have it cut across 
all your different papers. It is best not to go below 200 grams per square meter in weight for any of your papers. You can choose to go above that for your papers as well like I did. All my papers are 300 grams per square meter. Besides the weight, you should also think about the color of your paper. Typically for elegance purposes, it is best to stick with very light colors like white or ecru, ivory, cream, but don't go deeper than cream because your paper needs to be able to contrast beautifully with the ink that you write with, okay? Another thing to think about is the prints. Are you going to have anything printed on your paper? If so, what color are you choosing? It is best to also go with a color that contrasts nicely with your paper color. You can choose to go with maroon or navy blue or emerald green, you know, just something that is nice and will contrast sweetly and elegantly with the paper color that you have chosen. By the way, here's a pro tip. If you're going to have ink on your paper, it is best to have it engraved. It's just more sophisticated, okay? If you're not going to be going with ink, what are your other options for customizing and personalizing your papers? I chose not to have ink on my paper, so I decided to have my papers embossed instead. Another pro tip, if you're not going to have your papers engraved, it might be best to just have them embossed. The indentation of it just adds an extra touch. Finally, I can show you my papers now. The first paper that I'm going to be showing you is my informal. I don't know if you can see, but it comes embossed. It has my initial K right in the center. And like I explained before, informals fold in half. So it has a line across that makes it easy for you to just fold when you're writing. Now remember that when you're writing on a foldable paper, it is best to start to write from the bottom half of the paper, not from the top half. It is just more elegant to look at, except when you have a lot to say and you have very little paper to write it. Also, like I mentioned before, informals are used by women to write things like invitations. I also use mine to write little notes when I'm gifting people, just so that they know how much thought was put into getting the gift across to them. The typical size of an informal is 4 by 3 inches, but you can also customize your sizes according to your taste. My informal comes with a matching envelope which is very cute and very tiny it just fits in properly and is a perfect match for when it's folded the envelope for my informal is not tissue lined and it's not embossed either so here's where I just write the address and seal and send the next type of paper that I'm going to be sharing with you are my fold over cards this is what it looks like. As you can see, in comparison with the informal, it is slightly bigger. Also, like the informal, it has my initial embossed right here at the top, and it folds over just like the informal does. It also has a line across the middle that helps folding. It comes with a matching envelope. As you can see, the envelope for this one is slightly different. It is tissue lined with maroon tissue and it is just so elegant. I don't know. It's just, I love it. <laughs> I just love it. I'm sorry. It is also important to note that I decided to go with envelope flaps that are square for my fold over notes as opposed to that for my informals which are more triangular in shape. So this is just what I personally liked. You can choose what you want for yours. It's also important to note that it fits in and slides in very easily into its envelope. The next paper that I'm going to be sharing with you are my letter sheets. My letter sheets are five and a half by seven inches. I forgot to mention that my note cards are five by three and a half inches. So you can also choose to go above this size if you want to. And you can also decide to go for bigger letter sheets if you want to. I decided to go with this size because I feel like it's more chic. It also comes with its own envelope which is also tissue lined with maroon tissue paper. This doesn't fold over, but you typically should fold your letter sheets in three 
So I typically just roll it just so that I don't make a mess of my fold and I fold it in three. But for this paper size, you can just decide to fold in two and it fits in perfectly into its envelope. So that's why I chose to go with that size. <laughs> I just really like it. Um, I also wanted to mention that just like the other papers, my letter sheets are also embossed with my initials. So that's all I have to show you for my papers. Now we're moving on to other parts of the stationery. The next thing that I wanted to talk about with regards to stationery is your pen. Your pen says a lot about you because when you're writing, your ink is your voice. So it is best to go with good quality ink and good quality pen. I always advise people to go with a fountain pen. It is just so much more beautiful, so much more elegant. You can really never go wrong with any type of fountain pen you choose to go with. I decided to go with a black and gold color because I like gold and I wasn't going to go for a white and gold, so it is a 2668 point, um, which is for general correspondence. I don't know if you can see. I'll try to zoom in a bit just so that you can see what the tip looks like. But really, in this day and age, nobody really cares about the point and the size of the point of your um fountain pen even though like in the past these are things that people really paid attention to now for the final component of a stationary wardrobe your seal set a seal set is not an essential part of your stationary wardrobe but it gives a really beautiful finishing touch to your elegant stationary set i believe it's important for everyone to have one but then again this is me talking you don't have to but it's nice to this is what my seal set came in and this is what it looks like it came in this really nice box I'm just going to open it and we'll talk about all the things inside of it so first off it comes with two little candles like that you know if you can see then it has a spoon for melting the seal basically you light the candle and hold the spoon over it with the wax inside wait for the wax to melt and then you pour the wax over the envelope in between the flap and the body of the envelope and wait for it to dry a bit then apply your seal so your seal is a stamp looking kind of thing. I don't know if you can see. This is the seal part of it. And it comes with a brown wooden handle. So basically you apply this metal part to the hot wax in order to create your seal. I really love my seal because it is very much customized to my taste. It has my initial on it and it matches, well, it used to match my old logo, but now, I mean, I can still use it even though it doesn't really match, but it's still, you know, nice to have. This set also comes with three wax sticks. It has one in gold, one in maroon, or burgundy, I think, and one in silver. So I've used part of the maroon set before, but I haven't touched the silver and the gold. This is because I also got another set of wax buttons, um, or wax tablets, if you like. These wax tablets came in this case, and they just have tiny, oh, sorry, tiny wax tablets like that or buttons if you like so I prefer to use these because these are bronze and it just matches my paper a lot more 
I am not going to show you the process of applying my wax now but I'm going to show you what it looks like when you're done applying it and this is a tiny informal note that has my seal on it I don't know if you can see so this is where the seal is the note has already been opened so when you open it still retains the seal so it really looks pretty don't you think that this adds a very pretty touch to the paper I know you agree with me so if you can it is nice to have a seal set if you can't get a seal set another option would be to just get a stamp that works for you stamps will do the same trick it's just a way to seal your envelope we're past the days of the barbaric licking of envelopes to get the sticky part going just so that you can seal your envelope we're also past the days of using adhesive gums to um, apply to the flaps of the envelope and you know just stick it together this is way more elegant than that and I advise that if you can it would be nice to get one with this I have come to the end of this video if you enjoyed it please give me a thumbs up and let me know what you learned in the comments section below I am really looking forward to hearing from you guys more I enjoy the communication that we have in the comments section because it just lets me know that real people are actually watching my videos and it's quite humbling I really 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 appreciate you guys and I hope that we can keep growing together and growing in this community and learning to be better versions of ourselves don't forget to share this video and to subscribe if you haven't make sure that all your friends get to see so that they can learn something new bye ladies